This is the Ragged Edge Radio broadcast worldwide. Glad that you're with us today. This is Russ Dizdar. Welcome. You can see it all at shatterthedarkness.net on the web. We're glad you're here with us today. Listen, we are going to talk about Bohemian Grove and the rituals, um, the uh, mock human sacrifice, as they say, though I don't believe it's mock. That's it today, the 15th of July, the cremation of care, the ritual either last night after midnight or tonight, as many say. Not sure which, but um, the ritual there, California, it's been going on for quite some time in the United States, high places all over the world. So as we broadcast today, as you listen live worldwide And by the way, welcome by satellite, by internet, by the CB Channel 19 here in North America, let alone um, the shortwave that goes out and the downloads by the archives all around the world. Welcome. There is a God's grace, God's mercy today, but also we must understand the spiritual war that is um, happening all over the the planet, actually, and uh, lives are um, being engaged in so many ways. What many of us don't realize, the ancient high places, well, many of those have been uh, reactivated. Some of the Nephilim sites of the past, the uh, Nephilim architecture, they're being all reactivated. And tens of millions are being drawn into the spiritual connection that is happening around the world as we enter these last days. I um, just want you to realize today that we need the prayers of um, literally now thousands of you as we think in terms of um, intercession and what God will do. Now, especially in the United States and California, some of you around the world can tell us about some of the uh, places that you know of in your areas. Now, we'd love to hear about that. Just um, go to the website, shatterthedarkness.net, and you're going to see the connect tab and the connection or the um, where all the email and snail mail and everything else. Tell us about the uh, ritual sites in your nation, in your... Now, you can look, at, you can look for them on our website, shatterthedarkness.net, left-hand side under the free courses, one that deals with how to detect... Whether some of this is being done in your localities or not. Dark rituals, dark powers. I will say this to believers in Christ worldwide, that um, human sacrifice and the blood and guts kind of rituals that have been escalating over the last 60, 70 years, that will continue to escalate in the next number of years, well, that's the... um, that's the number one way the underground uh, opens the doorways and the gateways for very powerful dark presence to come in and continue to be operative around the world. They need that power to um, escalate their agenda. And the Spirit of God's given us insight in the prophetic literature and scripture concerning what they're going to do in the end of days, how this is going to be accomplished. And uh, clearly, not by human power, not by human hands, according to the prophecies in Daniel 2,600 years ago. Hey, glad you're with us. The Ragged Edge live radio broadcast now going worldwide by satellite, by Internet radio. And we're glad to be on Global Star Communications and the Hotbird Satellite Network Throughout the Middle East and Europe, uh, we're glad that you're listening at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., your times. Here in the United States, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome North and South America and all around the world. Hey, we need your prayers. We appreciate that. Big day today. And uh, this goes back for me to 1994, somewhere around there, when a Fort Bragg Psy warrior, a monarch, a chosen one, someone that had tremendous supra or parahuman abilities. Yes, they were multiple. Yes, they could speak numerous languages. Yes, they could draw the ancient summoning 
the languages for the demons, and uh, they are very versed, but they also gave me their necklace of an owl as they wrote down on page after page after page descriptions of the underground places, the cabins in the woods, the owl, the 40-foot owl, the human sacrifice, all that was done as they were used uh, as the Monarch Project, the um, inside sub-personalities, the sex slaves, and the rest. Well, all there on the Russian River in California, on uh, the continent of the United States of America, a high place no different, sometimes worse than some of those mentioned in the Old Testament. Human sacrifice and summoning of demons. Who are the elite behind this? Who are the attendees? And uh, the victims, well, some of you are listening right now. We're going to trust God for incredible interaction today as we lay out some more of the prayer plans and uh, share with you what is absolutely needed, not only here in the United States, not only there in California, but around the world. We need to see greater interaction in intercession, prayer, and the understanding of our authority in Christ, because um, the world you're living in, you can see it in the political, economic, militaristic. You can see it in the science. You can see it in so many places. Even the masqueraded counterfeit spirituality that is uh, being pumped out. And this week we're going to talk about the immortals one last time when it comes to the transhumanists and their declared war, actually their terminology in Armageddon, when it comes to resurrectionists, that is, those who believe in the real Christ, his death, resurrection, and the indestructible immortality that he brings, in comparison to the, um, let me say it this way, there may be transhumanists, scientists, geneticists listening. What about the arrogance in the community of inventors, transhumanist scientists, um, when it comes to God, Christ, is there really no room in the transhumanist inn for the Christ that dies for you, humanity, and holds the immortal physics of God in giving the gift of immortality? I wonder who's spitting in the face of God today. Could it be the White House? Could it be the underground um, Luciferian? I mean, the real ones that know what human sacrifice is. If tonight's the night, tonight's the night you need to pray and I need to pray concerning explicit, extraordinary exposure of Bohemian Grove. Well, I'll lay out some things in this broadcast, some targets in prayer. So we'll ask you to um, email us, let us know that you're praying. Email us, let us know whether you're a victim or not and you have something to say. We just had on our Facebook main page, my main page under Russ Dizdar, um, another one that declares that he is a victim of uh, the multiplicity issue and the rituals at Bohemian Grove. More and more coming out. And so we pray for extraordinary strength, extraordinary rescue, extraordinary courage by those who have been used in the rituals and uh, know the inside story, maybe some workers on the inside. Maybe God will engage some of the perpetrators like Saul of Tarshish was engaged, brought down so that you might bring the exposure needed and the help that's needed. What needs to be known by believers in Christ in North America and around the world is that high places like this have been in operation around the world. They're growing. The old places are being reopened and reactivated. And do we just sit back and watch? Do we just sit back and um, count ourselves as one of the conspir conspiracy thinkers and screamers and that's all we do? Or do we mount up in the sight of God before the throne of God and ask God to stretch out his hand? Whether by earthquake, whatever it takes, bring the owl down. Bring the high place down. Bring an extraordinary rescue to the victims. Bring an extraordinary exposure to the perpetrators. And um, what about those in attendance? Presidents, uh, senators, the wealthy elite, the wealthy, empowered media moguls, uh, the 
military elite. Now, there's a reason why those elite are brought there and summoned there and gathered there. And I'm going to tell you the way it really works today in this broadcast, how the gathering occurs, what occurs at the gathering, and an update and a call not only for 10 million fierce worldwide as we continue to broaden that picture, but right now today, as Tom Dunn has done in his own... um, audio, a video that he's put out on Project Josiah, the page projectjosiah.com. Take a look. Look at the Facebook. Uh, Look how Tom has shared. There are others that can do this. More and more victims are telling us. But it's time to see, as we've seen in the book of Acts, there are times in which God knows how to just simply stretch out his hand. Even God can cause the earthquake to crack the owl and bring it down, that's one issue. Because you've got to understand the uh, center, the gateway that that a high place like this um, provides. And when it's done in super, supernatural secrecy and uh, physical secrecy, when it's done in a kind of uh, miniature example of the big planetary ritual release of demonic powers in the book of uh, Revelation. It has not yet been done, but a planetary wave that will cause the biggest, broadest gathering by dark powers, Armageddon itself will have to have those dark powers to gather the world elite. So I want to back away from that in a moment here, and uh, let's look back at uh, the gatherings at Bohemian Grove, the gatherings at Chechen Itza, and Nephilim architectural sites around the world, all the high places. Listen carefully. The ancient gods and demon beings that were there, the fallen ones that are all around those areas that opened the gateways in the past, that guided the architecture and the rituals and all that was needed to um, bring about those places. Kind of a perpetual um, uh, summoning and uh, gateway openings. That's why so much human sacrifice. And when you track the human sacrifice worldwide, you're going to find that it goes to the high places. It goes to Nephilim architecture in the past, the underground right now. And here's my, let me just say my opinion. In our research in 30 years in driving and tracking places and victims taking us to high places. Actually, they're all over the place. They're all over the place as we've been taken backwards, seen pictures of double basements, seen locations, heard about gatherings. Well, again, I'll say on the website, shatterthedarkness.net, left-hand side under the free courses, Under dark powers, dark rituals, please understand this plea today. Most believers right now in Christ, as we've done in the last four and a half years, conferences everywhere, and by what you write to me across the board and around the world, most believers are not on the cutting edge when it comes to spiritual warfare, the basics, and what we need to know as believers living in a world that is in a vast spiritual battle. Most believers don't know about their authority. Most believers don't know how to put on the armor of God. Most believers don't know how to detect, understand, even the battle they go through personally. Let alone how to mount up with all the armor of God, the authority of Christ, and the power that is in prayer that has been given to us, and um, do some broader, larger exploits for God. We can read about that in Hebrews chapter 11 when by faith, and this included their prayers too, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice. They helped bring down some of the high places. And um, that involves also the um, in this day, in this hour, the salvation of lives, the deliverance from demonic um, transferences and placements of demons in their lives, the victims' lives, the um, exposure of the perpetrators like in Ezekiel chapter 8, and uh, the, um, well... Let's, let's um, as we'll do today, we'll talk about what God has to say about the old places in the Old Testament and the new places that are among us now. And a call for believers. 
You know, the world, the flesh, the devil, those are the battlegrounds. The fallen world system to suck you in, waste your time, dirty your life, pollute your spirituality in Christ, and, uh, and, and seeks to compromise you and weaken you. You've got to make the decision to pull away, to renounce, to stand in opposition to a fallen world system as you become the light that Jesus talked about in Matthew well, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, you and I as believers in Christ, the, the light of the world, not counterfeit light like the New Age and the rest involving Luciferic, transfigured, masqueraded, dark, lethal nature and power, but masqueraded in what they want to look like God, look like angels of light, look like dazzling spiritual beauty. How do you tell? Well, it never leads anybody to God, never points anybody to the real Christ, always seeks to um, bring broader blinders to those in the mix. Well, all of that we're going to dig into today as um, we uh, join you on Monday. Most of you will hear this live Monday, some of you late um, on the next night. Again, welcome all of Europe. Welcome around the world. We're so glad that you're all here and want you to know that truly God loves you. God seeks you if you don't know him and that God desires like no one else for you to know him and to receive from him. Now, you could call it the fix or the Greek word, the work, the works of God in salvation. Now, that's the biggest, most miraculous and um, truly parahuman event that is not only needed desperately, but um, it is what God wants to give. It involves knowing God. It involves experiencing God. It involves so much more that we want to share with you concerning, um, well, God's true desire for your life. Welcome again, Ragged Edge Live Radio on this Monday Night Live. And um, let me tell you this, the website primary website shatterthedarkness.net that'll tell you about everything going on including the conference in pikes peak colorado the end of this month i'll be there speaking in the main auditorium and then two of the training um breakout rooms and it's going to be an extraordinary time we want to tell you also that we're going to be in minneapolis minnesota we already have the um link up for that on our website the minneapolis underground summit that is in late September, so we want to make sure you hear about that. Nephilim Mounds, number two, to be on the cutting edge, to get the most important information um, that we can, whether back breeding, whether the reattempts, um, all the rest of that. We're going to have a bigger and broader Nephilim conference in October. The uh, details, as I speak to you today, they're being nailed down today and tomorrow. Wednesday, we go look at a site down in Newark, and um, we'll have up the details for the Nephilim Mounds too. Limited seating, ultimately. Want you to know about that now. But we want you to be there. There's going to be more than just L.A. Marzulli and Russ Dizdar. Uh, we may see uh, the likes of Gary Stearman and uh, Doug Hamp and Doug Woodward and others that will all specialize on this one subject. No other conferences like this. This will be bigger, broader, um, ten times over, I think, than Nephilim Mounds number one and the DVDs that are out. We're glad that um, so many of you have gotten those, and we're glad that you're hearing about it here. But I want you to know in the context of this, we're doing reap trips everywhere, many other things. We're glad to be with you commercial-free for the entire hour. How do we do it? Here's all we're going to say. If you're interested in investing and supporting all of the project that we're involved in, and we're extremely grateful for those that do, then just look at the support tab on the Shatter the Darkness website. Look at the hundreds of hours of training courses, and we're developing more, by the way. And by the way, we'll be back to the um, Spiritual Warfare Basics in Advance course coming up this next week. And the Satanic Occult Crimes, the second half, begins in August. And the courses are free. You can get the workbooks that help you. But the absolute course materials and lectures and hours, and we already have archived the last ones, 
another 60 hours worth between the two, and they're already there. So go to shadowthedarkness.net and um, see about um, Pike's Peak and uh, how to get live streaming now that it's sold out. Minneapolis Underground Summit, the Spiritual Warfare and the Satanic Ritual Crimes courses. Well, all of that kind of links into today. This week on the live Ragged Edge, tonight, Bohemian Grove, Mock Human Sacrifice. Yeah, right. And then how about Tuesday night, Transhumanists, the last message I'll do on this, and why they're declaring an Armageddon spiritual battle against believers in Christ, those who believe in the resurrection. And uh, the warnings that I want to give to transhumanists in their, well, in their um, para-human scientific research. And then for a couple of days, we're going to jump into um, Dr. Stephen Greer, non-human entities. They're claiming that they're dematerializing before their very eyes. They are summoning, they are seeking, they are looking to have them show up. And here's what we know in rituals, whatever whatever version, I don't care if it's voodoo or abakwa or santeria or underground Satanism or traditional Satanism or around the world, if you have real rituals designed by fallen dark entities and they've been communicated in old books or new materials or they're summoning and telling individuals what to do to contact them, then I, I tell you this, then uh, if they've designed it, if they've summoned it, if they've given the doorway, whatever that is, in the New Age levels or the deep blood and guts underground levels, well, they're knocking. You do what they want as designed by them. They're going to come through. So we're going to talk about uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, military political backgrounds, DOD, CIA, all the rest of those they're claiming are connected and um, what about the underground rituals in some of the underground bases and underground places, not only here in the United States, but around the world? I will say again, and this is something that will be bore out more and more and more as more exposure comes out, in our engagement, the underground rituals, the underground human sacrificial issues, I believe worldwide are being done on a broader scale than anybody knows. And I know this, I will have perpetrators, those who have been involved with it, those who have done it, those sub-personalities who have been programmed and empowered to do it. Listen, you need to write me. If you're someone that wants to um, spill some of the beans in the right way, then you need to write us, let us know, because we want to um, we want to pump it out there and let everybody know. Two quick um Two quick things I want to tell you about. Um, just a heads up here in the United States, I know the world was watching the uh, court case with uh, Zimmerman and the shooting in Trayvon there. And, and so here's what happens today. A 15-year-old is arrested because now there's been some uh, some rioting, some breaking windows and some protests and so forth after the, um, the non-guilty verdict has been read. But a 15-year-old is arrested for tweeting, listen, tweeting, a terrible, he calls a joke about mass homicide over the verdict. So here's what it says, quote, the tweet that got a 15-year-old promptly pulled into a police station. Last week, a team was freed from jail after being arrested for something offensive he wrote on Facebook. Over the weekend, another team was arrested for something he wrote on Twitter. The 15-year-old Chicago high school sophomore with the Twitter handle, I won't read that, about Zimmerman trial before the verdict had been reached, said this, quote, if Zimmerman... Uh, free Emma shoot gonna gonna shoot everybody in Zion causing mass homicide and I'll get away with it just like Zimmerman in other words Zimmerman gonna gets away he's gonna he's gonna unleash some mass homicide now it's dumb enough to feel that dumb enough to think that dumb enough to um tweet that police hauled him in and uh, giving him the riot act over the issue, checking him out. Let me give you another quick notice here. Scientology, one of the one of the big wealthy, a sanitized cult. Now, when I went to the Hollywood one and did a little bit of um, counter kind of an infiltration issue. I'm not going to say everything, but I was in Hollywood at the uh, Scientology building. 
Got all the way back in. They let me see their new movie by myself in their state-of-the-art um, theater there inside the building. Talked to one of their uh, recruiter, trainer kind of guys. And again, because I know left-hand path incrementalism, there's no difference in Scientology's approach in pulling you in incrementally. Left-hand path is all about little by little, less you know, then the more, then you know more. And once you take the first steps, and once you begin to be drawn in, once you do what it needs to be done, again, designed by, by, by entities, um, once you follow their incremental left-hand path, step by step by step, their view of it is uh, going up the stairs in spiritual experiences and um, awakenings and ascensions in some versions. Um, we see it as going down the stairs. If you um, look, like I have a staircase where I come down to this research center. And it um, and when the lights aren't on, you got to walk down the stairs slowly. There's like a little small light. But you step. the more you come down the stairs, the darker it gets overall. That's how it is in left-hand path ritualism and um, going in that direction. It's incremental. You never really just jump into human sacrifice. It's little by little by little so that you open the doors and do the rituals. That's the way it is with the um, OTO, the Odu Templi Orientis, the uh, Black Sun Camp here, the invitations we got to come to Chicago to begin to do some rituals in which they observe you and uh, you go little by little by little by little, as long as you keep acquiring more of that spiritual presence, that's the way the Masons do it, Russia Crucians do it, the old Gnostics did it, underground Satanism does it, traditional Satanism does it. Again, left-hand path incrementalism, that is, the spirits begin to draw you from a distance. Energies, feelings, um, even beginning to grant you a tantalizing non-human enhancement, drawing you in. Remote viewers um, have been sucked into this. Uh, astro projectors have been sucked into this. Little by little by little, they begin to draw you in. And then as they draw you in and begin to become more attached to you and begin to bring more of the influence, the more they draw you in, the more they come in and on you. Uh, the deeper they take you in and communicate and have you begin to do things and open gateways and open doors, the more they bring influence and the more they want to give you and the more they... And so it becomes kind of a, a sliding scale. But each step, inch by inch, in the incremental left-hand path method, each step you go down into their experience and acquire more of their secret elitist knowledge, as they claim, or more abilities from the entities emanating the energies, well, then guess what? The darker it gets in your ability to even hear, see, perceive, understand God. Second Corinthians, and this is for the remote viewer listening. This is for, this is for those that project out. This is for those who have been involved, and now you realize that when you've been drawn in to go passive, they want you to go passive. Why? Because they need you to do that in order to begin to bring the influence and able to perceive you and then, then, then on their side of the fence decide and arrange after they perceive you, body, soul, spirit, mind, and everything else, how they will take you in, how they will draw you in. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says this, that the God of this age, the God of this eon, the God of this time period, small g, that entity has uh, and is blinding the minds of unbelievers, that is, unbelievers in Christ, um, so that they cannot see. There is an actual supernatural working that um, can be layered and deepened the more anyone actually draws near the black flame, the dark side, even when it's masqueraded as light. And I'm going to tell you this, there are transhumanists that are doing this, so it's not just raw science. Uh, Scientologists do this, though it seems to be sanitized occultism. They won't like that, but ultimately that's what it's about, and that's why I say study what they really believe and you'll see what it is, and ultimately, like the movie they showed me, 
Moses has come and gone. Buddhists has come and gone. Jesus has come and gone. They're all weaklings. They're all the ones that have come and gone. Their time is over. Then they showed a picture of Ron L. Hubbard with a glowing ring around his head as he is like the new savior that is uh, outshining Christ, outshining Buddha, outshining all the rest. So they clump Jesus with Buddha. This, again, is that kind of um, small t theological clumping. Hinduism, pantheism does this. Gnosticism does this. New Age, if anybody does it today, the New Age movement. Kind of a theological, spiritual clumping, which means draw Christ into your crowd of deities and entities and beings, but make sure you strip off his deity, strip off his saviorhood, strip off so much of what he is, and then you have what? You don't have the real Christ in your hand. You have an anti uh, Christos. Uh, you have a um, a rabbit's foot Jesus, a guru Jesus, a a alienologist Jesus. You have a Masonic Jesus that you put in your pocket, that you discard to the side, left or right, because he's nothing. Demons don't fear a demon inspired, de deified fake Christ. That fake Christ can't help you. And if you've been trying to cling to that, and if you've been told that you can evolve to become like him, have you? Do you know anybody that's been uh, your uh, teachers and initiators that has any of them in the ascension process? Not at all. So here's the article quickly concerning Scientology. Christy Ali, who's a longtime Scientologist, angry picture of her. She's livid over... Um, uh, Leah Remy for leaving Scientology, the girl, um, again, both Hollywood stars. And it just simply says this, quote, When faced with malicious gossip, I take a moment to experience the loss of the person I thought was my friend. Um, this is an interaction between Remy and um, longtime Scientologist, Christy Alley, I wonder whether using the um, e-meter, using the, I wonder the level of mind control, whether they understand what that really is and the spirits involved and the spirituality. See, I was there. There's no question about um, those who have come out to tell the story. But again, there, whether there and remote, and I mentioned all the rest. Dark side spiritual approach is, one, masquerade itself, without changing its nature. Matter of fact, here's what I believe now biblically. They could masquerade and put on a front, but they can't actually change, morph, alter their real nature. Finite, fallen, corrupted, in vast opposition to God. So the uh, metiskids mazatai, that um, transfiguring they have the ability to do. Again, in, in numerous different places, the indicator is... One, they cannot and will not lead you to the real Christ, to God, to knowing God. They cannot and will not lead you to that indestructible, irreversible immortality that God has in his hand. They can't. They can give and will give by incremental approach communication, and they're always going to tell you about a process, an evolution towards some kind of godhood, some kind of para-human existence. They will lead even in the underground, in the sciences, in the um, what is considered occult sciences, a back-breeding to godmen, something to alter humanity, to turn them into um, non-humanity, that is, godmen, uh, elevated humanity, accelerated humanity, and so we're going to see the signs of that spiritual guidance in transhumanism, in uh, Scientology, in Gnosticism, uh, in the New Age movement, in the alienologists. And so we'll talk about that and give the warnings deeply today. What's happening at Bohemian Grove serves a global purpose. What's happening this week among, um, well, Dr. Stephen Greer and the teams he takes out to um, do as they're led to engage the Orions, to call them, to summon them. And now I'm going to read you uh, over the next couple of days some of the transcripts that talk about these beings are materializing. Now, I've said this a year ago. I'm going to say it again. More and more of the, those of you who've been through um, the... 
Well, the psychologists call it a uh, sleep paralysis, but it's not sleep paralysis. It's a visitation. One book author correctly titled this Dark Intrusions. Now, the book doesn't have the answers, but it does bring about the uh, reality that these are dark intrusions. And I'm going to say that. They're very dark, masqueraded, incremental in approach, little by little. So for that area alone, I'm going to tell you this. More and more of you, some of you can write to me and tell me your story. More and more of you are going to tell us this, that the shadow you saw, the pressure you had pressing down on your chest, um, here's where the story really goes. Pretty soon, if nothing's done and you're not freed, they want to um, paralyze you all the more, subjugate you, create enormous fear, begin to communicate or, or speak to you, um, warn you, scare you, threaten you, and ultimately engage sexually with you. That's the truth behind sleep paralysis on a global scale. So write to us from around the world and let us know. We'll put up some stories and uh, quote some of your stories without your name, of course, and tell about that. Just as we will do concerning victims coming out of and those who've been a part of the Bohemian Grove, you know, lethal behind the scenes experiences. So we want to hear from you around the world. So more and more is coming. More and more is happening. We'll tell you about uh, some more of this. Take a look, shatterthedarkness.net on the web, and you'll see the outline for the rest of the week that involves the transhumanists' immortalism. It involves the non-human entities and their messages and their dematerializing. And that's what I want to emphasize today. I don't care whether it's underground dark rituals, individual personal rituals, the astral projection engaging entities in that realm out there, there's a materialization or a kind of kind of body to body engagement. And then the dematerializing. I think we're gonna see more and more of that. Or at least hear stories about it. And then the last date this week, Friday, it's gonna be an update on satanic ritual abuse, the DID victims. We're gonna have some um pre recorded interviews from out west concerning ritual abuse, multiplicity, how a individual had been helped, what he's going to tell concerning um, the Mormon connection. By the way, the Mormon connection is a big connection to the satanic ritual abuse, multiplicity issue. But also they have the Mormon and Transhumanist Association. I can understand the connection because of the promise of a evolutionary development that has never, and I'm going to tell you this, never will occur. It is the promise that continues to lead millions out into the spiritual deep. Experience, event, communication, non-human enhancements, they'll give you all that. It's all real. Um, but it's not God. And they don't want you in any way to turn towards God or Christ because that's what their nature is. Do you know who's really messing with you? Who's messing with your head? Who's messing with your mind? Who's messing with your spiritual experience? Who's messing with your sexuality in the middle of the night? Tonight, as we uh, talk about Bohemian Grove for the rest of the um, broadcast here, we want to tell you a few things concerning it. Now, this goes back, you've heard me say this already, um, years, years ago uh, in the early 90s. One of the most empowered, and they may be listening, and we need to tell them that, were, that we've never stopped praying for them, for an extraordinary work of God to come and, and deliver them, as we've seen with Saul of Tarshish, as we've seen with others who've been brought out and delivered and healed and who love Christ. And for victims of MKUltra, Monarch, and all the rest, whether you've come from the NSA or the DID or the CIA or out of Russia or out of Germany or Europe or wherever else, whether you're downloading or listening live right there at Himmler's Castle in Germany, here's the truth. If you're split and you have the voices and the programming, if you have the demonization, the non-human enhancements, then you and I and all the rest of the victims worldwide know this. You've been created for their purpose. You've been um, a victim of theirs regardless of the enhancements you think you have. Now, you've been made to serve and serve the coming Antichrist. There's no question about that. 
The indicators to that would be numerous personalities, subpersonalities that are priestesses or priests that have the ancient languages that summon the demons, that have assassin abilities inside, weaponization inside, and that when activation occurs, you know that you're there to serve the coming new world leader or fura or the man, the parahuman man. You know of ancient rituals and connections whether you're first, second, third generation, and you're listening. Is my prayer today, the prayer of hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands now, as we ask many of you to join, that God unleash extraordinary miracle, extraordinary healing, extraordinary deliverance for the sake of your salvation and the plucking out of you from that deep, dark web. Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus for everyone listening, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Break the satanic side. Break the work of the dark side, Lord Jesus. Have you read in Scripture, 1 John 3, 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And those listening that have the demons, you know this and you're going to back away. Sometimes subpersonalities will even turn off the radio so you can't hear. Sometimes you switch out. You don't get to hear the rest of the um, broadcast, but others inside did. And they communicate it, and they respond, and they project to come here to read, to see. May God stretch out his hand. May God summon his angels, Psalm 68. May God show in a saving way, in a delivering way, may God's kindness lead to repentance for the perpetrators that listen or get sent this information. Regardless of whether you're hiding in the mountains with sophisticated equipment, joined in your spiritual parahuman abilities. May God visit you. May God engage you. I pray that. The way God engaged the king of Babylon uh, there in Daniel chapters 1 and 2. So Bohemian Grove, it goes back for me to the 90s. I've got the pages uh, that were drawn out by hand. Now, the truth is, the back then, I didn't know about Bohemian Grove, and this individual began to tell me, and others began to tell me after that, and more began to tell me, and I've not shown these pages. I've not published them. I've not put them out. The cabins in the woods of the underground places. Ritual sites, symbols, the sexual... And even the uh, things that are done with videotape and audio to uh, blackmail, as I've been told. The victim that drew the picture of the owl back in the early 90s and the water and the robed individuals and the audience across the stream and the fire and the what, um, what is known publicly as the effigy of a human being. Looks like about a five foot nine height, like a real size of a real human being. Here's what they discussed to me. Rituals have gone on prior. Some of you who are victims, some of you that know the insight want to tell some more about this. That that in the left hand, real blood and guts, raw brotherhood, order, ancient black flame stuff. Rituals, preparation rituals and holding of the abduction of individuals will be done prior. What you've seen in the video material that was put out and what you've seen on the web and the pictures you've seen, by the way, on the website shadowthedarkness.net, right side, scroll down, the owl with the cross through it, the little mark through it, we put up an old website. I can't change that website yet because we, uh, a year or so ago, had um, our the old um, Hard drive uh, from some kind of surge completely burned out sectors and everything. So when we get a chance, we're going to redo that website. The song uh, is Dies Irae. It's an old chant about the wrath of God, the second coming, and the wrath of God on radical evil. The reason I purposely put it there was that dark, real undergrounders know this and the lyrics of that. It's really a reminder to the elitists and the perpetrators. But I will take it off because some victims say that the sound of it uh, triggers them. So I will take it off when we make a new um, Bohemian Grove site. 
But I want you to know that it's not over. Many of you have heard about Bohemian Grove for, for years, and you've seen, you can go online, you can see videos. We've got videos um, from online connected to our little site that we made, and we're just giving you some insight. And I'm hoping that uh, for believers in Christ and others out there, that you know this should be an outrage. Because you have a community up there, some of which know and have known and have been praying about it. There's been some powerful intercessors. Probably your prayers from years ago have drawn us into it, and we've tried to draw hundreds of others into it. And today there may be hundreds, if not now thousands, you're going to have to target your prayers. You're going to be specific. You're going to have to ask for the Spirit of God to help and to guide and to lead you. And I'll give you some of the factors on how we do this here in just a moment. It's considered a high place. There are victims for years and years and years that have been programmed like monarchs, subpersonalities, demonization, for sexual use, ritual use, all kinds of other things, displays, and so forth there. So we have a lot of the chosen ones in the satanic sense that have been used and abused there and probably there now and have worked there as they've gotten older. But as they've gotten away, many of those know about this. And a new friend has contacted me, very fearful of the place, and very fearful to talk about his memories. But I'm hoping that he will talk with me about more, and uh, I'll probably hear the same of what I've heard in the past. But I'm going to tell you in detail more than ever, here's what we've heard. The kind of sexual things that go on, the children that are abused, the pre-rituals done prior to this cremation of care. Now, notice how it's called the cremation of care, that it's masqueraded as if the participants then could be drawn into it so that they can um, usher out emotionally and mentally as they're releasing and joining and agreeing with this ritual to release their cares in the prior year, to thrust their cares, to throw their cares out, to um, to um, trust in some sense this ritual being done will pull away a lot of their cares. Well, that's the masquerade. That's the lie. They've been opened up by... Um, being drawn in to be vulnerable and passive. They've been drawn to a place, first of all, where the real elite, the ones with real power, are those who have the ability to bring in kings and presidents and the world's richest and powerful military and leaders from all over the world. Ask the question, who has the power to bring all of them together and gather there? I believe personally, and I believe it will come out eventually because of the mode of operation, MO. Spiritually speaking, there's, like in law enforcement, there's an MO behind rituals and gatherings like this. This gathering would not be done without the pre-rituals done and the power sent and the calling, the summoning by supernatural strength. Uh, whether you believe this or not, they're going to send out spirits uh, targeting by name World leaders, presidents, kings, senators, military leaders, economic leaders, all the rest, to draw them there, to gather them there, like the future planetary release of powers we see in ritualistic format, by the way, that we see in Revelation 16. I've said this before, the reason undergrounders in the blood and gut circles summon demons, number one, to get more for themselves, more powers, more abilities. Number two, to transfer those demons into the ones being raised up in the covens and give them more powers and control them and give them abilities but control them and into their programming and everything else. And then number three, to unleash the, the demonic powers to cover them, to cloak them, to keep them layered in supernatural secrecy, thus the mysterium, the secret power of lawlessness, operative. Second Thessalonians 2, study it. Number four, they would summon demons to send them against their enemies. Christians, leaders, um, churches, everything else, and plot infiltration where they see trouble. And then the fifth reason, summoning the demons, to just release them into the air. As I've been told... And it makes sense to me how the underground would do this in 
in uh, in contrast to and in counterfeit to the power of the Spirit of God in the city. For when you read about revivals or you read about Pentecost itself or you read about Acts chapter 4, when power comes down by the Spirit of God, there is an expressed physical Response. I mean, there's power of God in the air, power of God operative to save, heal, deliver, to unleash Christ, to bring his grace and mercy. You can see it in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 8. The manifestation of the power of God uh, in lives, in areas, and anybody who's been to a real revival knows this. Anybody knows that has been in a real or read about revivals of the past where it says suddenly the power of God falls and it's as if God's power is in the air that God's presence is all over the place you'll read stories I've been in those kind of meetings I've been to those kind of places where it seems that God's power and truly listen churches gathering on Saturdays and Sundays should be like that every week and could be like that if you'll repent of the world's enculturation with the dumbing down, with the grieving of the Spirit of God, with the watering down and trying to make it marketable um, and and everything else to where you have nothing but... um, It seems like Christ is on the outside knocking to see if anybody wants him to come in. If God's power to save, heal, deliver, and work, and even bring miracles is not evident as we see in the book of Acts, then you've got either infantile Christianity, watered down, backslidden, Laodicean, or even uh, Sardis-type local situations. And that could be remedied. Go read Sardis, the church Sardis, in the book of Revelation and see what I'm talking about. Back quickly to Bohemian Grove. Now, the summoning by the elitists have been done in advance to um, be sending out in, uh, you know, there may even be attachments to the actual invitations. And so they would be releasing demonic presence towards those they've already begun to influence, those that um, they want to influence, and then the goal is to have them drawn there to the grove. In a place where the atmosphere, the prince of the power of the Eros, the immediate dense atmosphere in the area, the presence of the fallen ones, the presence of the dark side, extremely there on the grounds, in the air. I mean, the grounds where rituals are done will already be polluted in the sense we'll already have the attachment level and the places they've made and the dark symbols that are there, all about attachments. The owl in the woods, the owl in the woods. Now, the pre-rituals are done in all preparation. The gathering of all the people are there, the drinking and partying and making them loose and limber and passive and pliable and then then, uh, masquerading the ritual as something for them to release their troubles, to release everything so they can then, in some sense, willfully, willingly join in, be yielded. Whereas the real things that have been done is rituals in, in advance and this, what they've called on the web, mock human sacrifice. Ask real underground traditional Satanists. Ask the ones that really know what they're talking about. This is not sympathetic magic. This would be a real human being in terms of real satanic underground ritual. And every victim has said the same thing. It's a real ritual. It's a real human being. And uh, the distance between where that real human being is, and most likely the human being has been prepared, ritualized, alive, drugged so they can't cry out, but thrown alive into the fire. Notice the sound if you watch the videos on Bohemian Grove screeching sound to cover up anything else. Notice the culmination. Notice the fire. Notice the owl. It is not Moloch. It's most likely Semiramis, the ancient goddess, or this presence that goes all the way back to Sumer that is bloodlined all the way down as some of the darkest where secret promises of secret elite knowledge and the evolution to godhood and um, the gateways to those powers are promised. You have 
what in Scripture would be considered one of the ancient high places. Listen to this, just carefully. Isaiah 57, you burn with lust among the oaks. They love the deep woods where they can hide and dance with the demons and draw the spirits and uh, do everything in secrecy. You burn with lust among the oaks and under every spreading tree. You sacrifice your children in the ravines and under the overhanging crags. That's... That's there in Isaiah 57. Ezekiel 20. When you offer your gifts, the sacrifice of your children in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. You can go and read in Zephaniah. You can read in Amos. You can read Leviticus. You can read in, you know, all across the board. And all about human sacrifice. So if you're a believer and you understand the biblical side, then you understand... There is massive, massive human sacrifice. Now, that's, that's the, the powers that are drawn then in the culmination of that ritual, the kind of climax of that ritual then, the summoning of demons. And here's where one of the chosen ones stood up in Connecticut in a meeting. Eyewitnesses, 40, 60 people, I don't remember how, how many, stood up in a German-speaking, demonized program subpart, began to scream out saying that my head must be cut off, I'm telling the secrets, the old ones are coming, and just went off. They had to take the person out of the room. Because it triggered by telling what they're really doing at Bohemian Grove. They're summoning powers to um, target the audience they brought and release those powers on the world elite to influence them and to uh, begin attachment level stuff, um, that's what it's all about. That's what that ritual is all about. That's what's happening. If you know anybody that's been drawn, you might need to begin to um, tell them that this is what uh, they're being drawn into. Well, we need in this day, this hour, a deliverer. We really do. And we're going to let you hear this incredible song on the way out tonight. Let me tell you a couple of other things. The attendees, whether they're knowledgeable or not, uh, they're being influenced. They're participating. Whether passively or willfully, they are aiding and abetting some of the deepest, darkest human sacrifice ritual that brings up the powers that unleashes them on world leaders. The secrecy is big. Pray against Bohemian Grove. Pray for God to bring down the high place. Pray for extraordinary deliverance and rescue for the victims. Pray for the perpetrators to come out and be dealt with like Saul of Tarshish or to be stopped, whatever it takes. It's time for Christians to move out of this passive uh, spectatorship. There's no power there, is there? There's no real life there, is there? Living backslidden is miserable, isn't it? Just yielding your life to the living Christ, to the Savior, allowing the Spirit of God to fill you and use you powerfully in prayer, powerfully in witness. Oh, 10 million fierce, Christian. If you don't know the living Christ, He summons you, He calls you, come to Christ. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, wherever you are in the world, you can come to Christ, the Savior, God in human flesh, that died, shed his blood, rose. The, the demons fear him, his name. They fear his blood, the blood of the Lamb. They fear the cross. I pray for you today that God will save you. Come to Christ. Let us know when you do. Let's pray today, the 15th of July. Come on, join up with Project Josiah and the intercession that is going on. Worldwide, we're calling you. Join in. We'd love to see 10 million fierce believers just like, just like Philip in Acts chapter 8. Father, with extraordinary power, and bring down Bohemian Grove, bring down the perpetrators, bring extraordinary exposure, bring extraordinary help and rescue for the victims. Keep praying all day, all the rest of the day through the night. Rust is there, the Ragged Edge live broadcast on this night. Shatterthedarkness.net.